Today we are exploring whether the top cover of the HP Elite Desk 800G Ford Mini PC can be replaced with a ventilated one to improve airflow in the system. In my previous video, I demonstrated how to install an Oculink port via the M2 slot on this mini PC. And now I'll replace the top cover with a 3D printed ventilated top cover, pair it with my RTX 3050 DIY eGPU dock, and test some gameplay to see how the CPU temperature improves. Whether you're a mini PC enthusiast or a tech aficionado, sit back, relax, and join me as we dive into the step-by-step -step process for this build. Thank you to my entire YouTube community for suggesting in the comments of my previous HP Elite Desk 800 G4 mini PC video to replace the top cover. In this video, I'm giving it a try. I examine the top cover of this mini PC and discover that the front bezel is removable, a very convenient feature that allows me to design a custom top cover while still using the front bezel. To remove the front bezel, first loosen two screws, then push on six clips to detach it from the top cover. And here's the front bezel. You can also order a ventilated top cover from online stores like eBay or AliExpress and attach it to the front plate if you don't have access to a 3D printer or prefer an original metal top cover. However, the top covers listed in those online stores can be quite expensive, potentially costing half the price of the PC itself. You might wonder how I measured the PC case to create a 3D model for it. For this, I used a Hardell Digital Caliper 12 inch, which is the most affordable one I could find on Amazon. If you're looking for a digital vernier caliper, you should opt for a longer one like this. A 150 millimeter caliper won't have enough length to measure these mini PCs. I measured the dimensions of the case and all the ports, then sketched the design in 3D modeling software. I 3D printed it and made adjustments a few times until everything fit together Here it is, my 3D printed ventilated top cover. In fact, the 3D printed top cover may not look as polished or be as durable as the original metal top cover. However, it gets the job done instantly and allows us to showcase our ideas to the world. Now let's go ahead and install the front plate onto the 3D printed ventilated top cover. All right, all the cutout holes for the clips fit and snap together nicely. Now let's secure the front plate to the 3D printed top cover by installing the two screws. Since the smaller parts of a 3D printed object aren't strong enough, I decided not to include hooks on the top cover and the chassis. Instead, I designed screw holes to securely attach the top cover to the PC chassis. Here, I have an M2 to female Oculink adapter installed in this mini PC. I demonstrated this setup in my previous video, so if you're interested in learning more or checking out the adapter I used, please follow the link to that video in the description. I've already reapplied a thermal paste to the CPU of this PC. However, I used a low watt per millikelvin thermal pad. Since I have an Intel Core i7-87000T installed, I plan to reapply thermal paste with a higher conductivity thermal paste for better performance. All right, let's move on to reinstalling the CPU heatsink and fan. The moment of truth. Will the 3D printed case design fit with the PC chassis? The screw holes are okay. Let's go ahead and install the four screws 
to secure the 3D printed case to the chassis. The 3D printed case has been successfully installed onto the PC. Now, let's preview how the final project looks. In my opinion, ventilation isn't strictly necessary for a 35 watt CPU. However, if you've installed an add-on card like a GPU, this PC supports options such as the HP RX 564GB or a Thunderbolt card, the ventilated top cover becomes much more important. In that case, you can 3D print this design for your setup or order the original top cover, as shown at the beginning of this video. Now, let me introduce my RTX 3056 gigabyte eGPU dock. In a previous video, I shared a guide on how to build this eGPU using a Thunderbolt eGPU board. This time, I've created a new eGPU using an Oculink board, and I'll be showcasing it here. The Oculink eGPU setup is an excellent choice for older mini PCs like this one. It's also more convenient to install, as you can simply connect it to an M.2 slot and it's ready to go. In contrast, a Thunderbolt setup is better suited for laptops or mini PCs that already have a Thunderbolt port. For this mini PC, a Thunderbolt setup isn't worthwhile since the Thunderbolt port is inaccessible and purchasing a Thunderbolt adapter would significantly increase the cost. Now let's proceed with a CPU stress test to evaluate the thermal performance of the setup with the new ventilated top cover. By performing a CPU stress test using CPU Z, the CPU package temperature averaged around 66 degrees Celsius with a maximum temperature of 75 degrees Celsius and a steady 70 degrees Celsius during most of the test. All CPU cores maintained a temperature of 69 degrees Celsius while running the stress test this demonstration provides useful information for those interested in setting up this mini PC as a home media center for casual gaming via emulators or as a home lab PC. The ventilated top cover could be a worthwhile solution for these setups. Now I'm gonna test a few games to see how the thermal performance holds up during gameplay. All games are being tested at 1080p with medium graphic preset settings. In conclusion, this project offers a practical approach to modifying a mini PC with accessible tools and 3D printing. By accurately measuring the components and refining the design through iterative printing, I developed a ventilated top cover that supports both the aesthetic and thermal needs of the PC. The CPU stress test showed that the system stays within safe temperatures even under load, suggesting that this solution can work well for tasks like media playback, casual gaming, or home lab use. Additionally, the use of an Oculink-based eGPU dock provides a simple alternative to Thunderbolt solutions for expanding the capabilities of older mini PCs. Overall, this project shows that with careful planning and common tools, it's possible to make useful improvements to a mini PC setup without a significant increase in cost.